Today I'm going to be getting the Platinum Trophy for LEGO Harry Potter, Years 5-7. to seven. I did say if my Years 1-4 to four video did well, I would do this game, and well here I am. Thank you so much for the support on the previous video, and I really hope this one can replicate it. This game definitely had a darker tone to the previous one, and was a very different experience to play, but with all that being said, let's re-enter the LEGO Wizarding World once again. Are you ready for potions? One, one. Pack it in. Like before, step one is to complete the story. Although the game's title only contains three school years, the game is still broken into four chapters. This time, however, you earn a trophy at the end of each level, along with a couple unmissable trophies along the way, meaning upon completion of the game, you should have a lot more trophies. So let me take you through the missions. The Order of the Phoenix. There's this really cool flying opening to the game, and Harry appears in front of the Ministry to answer for using magic outside of Hogwarts. Is that his real name? Surely that's not Dumbledore's real name. Well, apparently it is. It was after this mission I was able to enter cheats just like the previous game to multiply the amount of studs I gained. This just saves time on any extra grinding. We travel back to Hogwarts and navigate through the snowy Hogsmeade, which takes us to a bar where we help our classmates. The students are taught dueling, which is a new feature for this game, and it pops up throughout quite a few times. Harry gets a smooch from Cho Chang, <laughs> yeah, boy. and then completes some flashbacks with Professor Snape for another trophy. At Christmas, we complete some random tasks with Sirius Black, and we learn that Bellatrix has escaped from Azkaban. Umbridge is taken away with the help of Grap, our friendly troll companion. Honestly, apart from her being annoying in the film, I can't really remember why this happens. I need to brush up on my Order of the Phoenix knowledge. But anyway, moving on. We run into some unfriendly faces in the Ministry. There's a duel with Bellatrix, which will come back for two trophies later. Sirius unfortunately departs us. And then Voldemort returns once again with a bloody dragon. After Voldemort does a runner, we're rewarded with a trophy for completing the level, completing the Order of the Phoenix, and our first miscellaneous trophy. Nuts and vaults. Collect a billion studs. I thought I would have hit that as well. So with the Order of the Phoenix done, we're moving on to the Half-Blood Prince. And man, do I have some bad things to say about this one. It starts okay enough in the Weasley Emporium, but there's not really anything of note that happens in this first level. And the same can be said for the next few levels. I really just didn't like these sets of levels and I'm not a big fan of the film either. What is this level? Why am I pouring a pint and clearing tables for? The next mission involves us organizing a party of some sorts, I think. And then I shit you not, we were doing laundry. Stop making me do housework in a Lego game. Like why am I washing shit and why am I cleaning a kitchen? Like, oh God, I hate this film. I hate this film so much. Luckily, the second half of this mission is slightly less monotonous. By the next mission, after fighting Draco in a toilet and then doing meaningless puzzles, I was really not happy with the game at this point. <laughs> this film is so bad, even in Lego games. Like, what am I doing? Another boring level later, and we were finally at the end. This is probably the only good mission as we force Dumbledore to drink some dodgy water and then, spoiler alert, Snape sent him over the edge. Eventually, this means the level is completed, and we earn a trophy for completing the level and the year. Dumbledore's demise, and we should get... I am the half Blood Prince, complete year six. That year fucking sucked. Moving on to a slightly better note, we're on to the Deathly Hallows, part one. This year was immediately so much better as the story actually moves along somewhere. The first level involves us turning everyone into a variant of Harry Potter for his protection. And it is during this level we earned an unmissable miscellaneous trophy for using the Deluminator. The Deluminator is an item which is specific to Ron's character. Bellatrix pops out of a cake and we earn a trophy. That was so much better than all the half Blood Prince levels already. And immediately after this cutscene, whilst looking at my phone, I earned another unmissable trophy for completing all lessons. In the next level, Harry and Ron infiltrate the Ministry using a Polyjuice Potion, which disguises themselves as Albert and Reg. And after taking revenge on Umbridge and escaping, we complete the mission. We take out a snake in a house, not really sure why. And then I earned two semi-missable trophies. One I accidentally triggered by hitting the radio in the tent. This is for completing the scene where Harry and Hermione dance. And then a few moments later, I got the trophy Hogwarts has changed for visiting the Hogwarts foyer in years seven to eight. I actually quite like the uniqueness of this trophy. Harry and Ron recover this sword and then we fight some kind of ghost Voldemort. At this point, my housemate decided to come earn the trophy with me. So show some love to Gibby in the comments. The penultimate mission in this year has us enter the Lovegood house where we get this interesting flashback sequence and then Luna's dad dresses up as Luna and we find out Luna was actually captured. Whee! The final mission has us save some of our friends as we duel Bellatrix again and then the saddest part of the franchise happens. 
Oh my god, that's even worse than the original. What is that? Oh, <laughs> no, not Dobby. They did him so dirty. Here lies a free elf, and to be continued, year seven. How much better is that than the Half-Blood Prince, right? Okay, we're finally onto the Deathly Hallows Part 2. We've hit the end of the franchise, and these are some of my favorite levels in the game. So we break into Gringotts with Hermione disguised as Bellatrix, and there's this cool minecart section before taming a dragon and escaping. We return to Hogwarts and everyone is happy to see us, except of course, Snape, Pops. who we have a duel with before completing that level. The next level has us re-enter the Chamber of Secrets as Ron and Hermione, and we blow up the bridge with Neville and Seamus to prevent Voldemort from entering. The next mission has us in the Room of Requirement, and I obtained the trophy Avid Reader for using a Quibbler Dispenser 25 times. There's a dragon in here causing absolute havoc, and after successfully surviving it, we get another end of level trophy. The next level has us waterboard Professor Snape. Yeah, that does seem a little bit much. And then it's the final level. There's a cutscene where we learn Snape was good all along, and then Harry Potter confronts Voldemort as part of his plan. Harry Potter is dead! <laughs> We get the Voldemort character token here, which is useful for the 100% cleanup, and then Lord Voldemort is destroyed once and for all, and that is the end of the story. Voldemort's demise, and we should get complete year 8. All was well, complete year 8. That's the end of the story. After getting those trophies, we fast forward to see Harry and Co all grown up. So with the main game complete, I decide to knock out the bonus level, which has its own trophy tied to it, titled Collector's Dream. Okay, so we've made the door, similar to uh, the end of the first game where we get Lord Voldemort, but obviously we can do this just after beating the story. In years 1-4, to four, there were 10 bonus levels and 4 builder levels that I really didn't have fun with. But nothing, and I mean nothing on that game, compares to how dogshitly designed this one was. It must have taken nearly an hour to complete, and by the end, I was fuming. Please, please let that be enough. Oh, thank God for that. Collector's dream. Uh, complete the bonus level. That was horrendously long. That was so much worse than the Voldemort one and the other bonus levels in the first game. Next, I decided to unlock what red bricks I could, and I got a trophy halfway there for hitting 50% game completion. And with the bonus levels and all story levels complete, it's time for stage two, mission-related collectibles. Just the same as the previous game, there are four house crests in each level, one student in peril, three character tokens, and one true wizard. I already had 23 out of 24 true wizards at this point, with the only missing one being in the first level. The characters needed to unlock all the items are a dark wizard, I used Tom Riddle for this, a strong character, for which I used the dog Fang, a key character, for which I used the goblins, and for some levels I needed to use Ron's dad, Arthur, as he is the only character to my knowledge that can fix these blue objects. So with all those characters under my belt, I went through each level and got every single collectible. This certainly felt like a bit more of a grind than when I did it on the previous game. Whilst going through each level, I had a question that kept recurring as I was using Ron. So I don't know if you guys remember in the Philosopher's Stone where Harry has that moment where he talks to the snake and in the Chamber of Secrets, he learns he's a parcel tongue. Can you hear me? Now, they say this is like a really unique ability, right? And Tom Riddle can do it and Harry can do it and obviously a few others, but I'm really confused as to where Ron uh, in between years 1 to 4 and in 5 to 7, learn to parcel ton. Uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, if any Harry Potter fans can comment below where that came from, let me know. Eventually, after two days of running around on these same missions and getting every collectible, I reached the end and got my last one. So I'm on 64.5%. I haven't unlocked all the characters yet. I'm on 149 out of 200 gold bricks. So I'm going to run around the castle again. Hopefully this is a bit quicker than the last time. And then we're basically there for the 100%. And that brings us to stage three, free play collectibles. So after collecting every single character token, red brick, gold brick, and Student in Peril. In Hogwarts, Diagon Alley, and the Forest, I was finally on my way to 100%ing the game, but that didn't mean the Platinum just yet. This did take another few hours, but with the fantastic text guard I used, it was far easier than the story mode collectibles. Whilst getting these collectibles, I earned one of the few miscellaneous trophies available. Oh, we finally got that. Uh, not fun guys, that's for defeating 30 of those red cap guys. They're all over the game. Uh, I thought I was gonna get it probably quite a while ago, but we finally got that one now. Okay, so I've just done this area, and I'm on 14 out of 14 character tokens, but it does say 198 out of 200 on my overall, so I am missing two somewhere. So I'm just going to quickly do some research uh, and see where I'm missing them. 
Okay, and I did just completely miss going into this room uh, the first time around, so all I need to do is open this bookshelf. And there he is, Argus Filch. So that now is 200 out of 200 and 100% on everything. I just need to go buy everything. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to buy all the missing red bricks. Uh, I don't think there's too many of them, to be fair. That should have bumped up our percentage a little bit more. We're now on 74.4%. And the main bulk of it will come from the character tokens now. I started buying every single character and we popped an abundance of trophies in a row. Finally, after hours of playing with none popping. We are the DA for unlocking all members of Dumbledore's army. Tall Order for unlocking all Order of the Phoenix character variants. Pajama Drama for unlocking every character's pajama variant. A Mini Fig's best friend for unlocking every character with a pet. Witch for unlocking all witch characters. And finally, Dark Times Ahead for all Dark Wizards. Wow, that was quite the mouthful, wasn't it? Um, and we are on 99.9%. .9%, so all I need to do now is buy one of these last ghost characters, Professor Bins, and we back out. But I am the chosen one. Complete the game to 100%. Now don't go anywhere. There's a few more things to get. And finally, we're onto the short and sweet stage, miscellaneous cleanup. So for this trophy, I need to use a Weasley box with each Weasley. Uh, and I've got three characters here that I don't think I would have used, which is Bill, Charlie, and Percy. Um, so we're going to go see if this will unlock the trophy. If not, I'm going to go and try uh, Fred and George as well. Okay, so here I have Ginny, Fred and George. And let's try it with these three now. Weasley does it. That's the first one. I guess it was one of them, Fred or George. I'm not sure which one I'm using at the moment. But use a Weasley box with every Weasley. The next trophy required me to change between every variant of Harry and kill him with Lord Voldemort. Okay, and so if I've done this correctly, this should be the last uh, Harry I need to defeat. And there it is. What if? Defeat every Harry free play variant as Lord Voldemort. My final two trophies both involved defeating Bellatrix. The first one was with Sirius Black for a serious family issue. Nice pun. And then the final trophy was defeating her with Neville in his waiter uniform. And that'll be it. A dish best served cold. What a name. And of course, 10 points to Gryffindor. Harry Potter 5 to 7 is done. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If there's another game you want me to play, let me know down below. And until next time, goodbye.